So something that I've been really passionate about exploring over the last couple of years is what is at the heart of our faith and it's my deep belief that at the heart of our faith is this story of the incarnation and from that story I um, get the inspiration around this idea of embodied action and so for me NVDA or nonviolent direct action is actually part of the heart of the story of our faith and I think that Jesus was actually engaged in NVDA pretty much from the beginning and so using him as our archetype, our symbol, our model, our dear friend and walking alongside and um, following that, that model that he's laid down for us, I think that we are all called as people of faith to engage in NVDA in whatever way is possible for us. And that's recognising that many of us have a whole lot of physical stuff going on or we have a whole lot of you know family complications and lives and jobs and, and recognising that taking time out to actually you know stand on a front line or um, march in a rally is not necessarily something that we feel that we can do. But there are always ways of supporting the action of others through prayer and through prophetic speaking, through you know naming what's going on and supporting it so NVDA doesn't have to mean that you yourself are locking on although I would encourage everybody to um, take part in that one of my favorite activists is 92 and he was um, he's a second world war vet he goes to actions with his son who is in his 70s and is his carer and he's legally blind but he was there at Malls Creek he's there at Adani and um, he's an absolute inspiration um. When you're involved in direct action, are you involved uh, explicitly as a Christian or as a minister and how do people react to that? Yeah, so when I do NVDA, I'm very much there as a Christian minister. I always introduce myself um, as the Reverend Alexandra Sangster. I'm here with the Uniting Church. I'm here as a Christian and I'm here to stand alongside and with all the other activists that are there. Uh, if I'm at a rally or if I'm um, at a, a sit-in or if I'm standing on a front line, I will wear liturgical, um, I wear my alb and my stole or I do have a, a little dog collar that I pull out on occasion. Um, I usually lose it, so I have to cut one out of a cereal packet. But um, I do, you know, I brush up quite... Sometimes I forget that I'm wearing it and I'll be on a train or something and I'm wondering why is everyone looking at me so strangely? And then I'm like, oh. So, yes, so I'm very much there as a Christian and I think it's really important that Christians are visibly seen we are, you know, Jesus was a sign, a visible act. The sacraments are this visible act of God's love. And I think we need to, um, the, the medium is the message. We know that we live in an era where everything is all about the image. So um, we can subvert that and, and use that to actually go, you know what, we are here too. We are here as followers of Jesus. And we, um, we're not shying away from that. And actually, that for me to be a follower of Jesus means I have to be there you know, present in those actions. And how does being involved in that action, does, do you find that that uh, increases your sense of hope as well or challenges it to remain hopeful? Or? Oh, it absolutely increases my sense of hope because um, it's this extraordinary thing. Like I was, uh, I was emceeing for Friends of the Earth a few weeks ago. They were launching their six-month campaign towards um, the next state election that we've got coming up in Victoria. And I was in a room with old activists and young hippies and queer folk and Indigenous and people from all over the place who were committing themselves to, to walk for work and work for justice. And, and I was there as a minister um, of religion and I just went, thank God that all these people are here doing what they do. And if I wasn't engaged in the activist space, I'd simply be in the church, which you know I love and am passionately grateful to for saying yes to me all those years ago. But I would have, I would probably be feeling a, a great sense of despair. But because I'm out there in the community and I'm seeing what everybody's doing, and then for them at the same time to go, look, the church is here too. And despite the fact that we are a predominantly secular country, and despite the fact that we are more and derided and seen as misogynist and racist and sexist and homophobic and really boring, there is still a power within um, our story, a profound power of the Gospels. And when we stand alongside people, the gratitude that I have received as, as a symbol and a representative of the church is always astonishing. Um, yeah, so, so it's actually a profoundly hope-filled experience for me to be engaged in action.